Sonic Riders. Quite possibly the most unique racing game to ever exist in the history of racing games. As part of the 15th anniversary, Sonic Riders debuted on February 21st, 2006 on GameCube, PlayStation 2, Xbox, and PC. Years after Sonic R, fans requested another Sonic racing game. Producer Takashi Yuda desired a Sonic racing game that was more dynamic and also included a trick system. Sonic Team figured that surfing or snowboarding was more flexible, combined with a strong emphasis on air. Hoverboards were chosen as they could work on any environment. Although the reception was mixed to average from critics, fans of the series thought it was a welcoming addition to the Sonic series, albeit the stacks of mechanics that players had to learn in order to probably play the game. Sonic Rider Zero Gravity followed up with the first game with similar mechanics, but in comparison, the last game were neutered. The air system was replaced with a gravity system, so Zero Gravity completely removes any type of fuel source. The trick system has been died down and is now tied to where the character jumps from the ramp. In Sonic Riders, the mechanics use what people call Tony Hawk controls. For those that play the likes of the Tony Hawk Pro Skater or Underground games, you know what that means. But for those inexperienced, it essentially means that you use the skateboard controls to jump off of ramps or grind on rails, rather be holding down the jump button or actively jumping on rails and potentially balancing. Zero Gravity removes those controls to simplify the gameplay, but honestly this made the gameplay too simple. Unlike in Riders where you can have the most control from jumping from ramps, grinding on rails, or performing tricks, Zero Gravity simplifies this by allowing only jump presses. Gravity diving is a neat trick as characters can bend gravity and use the environment to regain gravity energy and to reach other pathways. At least Zero Gravity offers a hands-on tutorial that Riders unfortunately lack. I still think that Zero Gravity had more to offer in terms of its content in the Babylon lore and the story, so Zero Gravity would be considered worthy of being the second installment in the Sonic Riders series, with few exceptions. Sonic Free Riders was a goddamn tragedy. A Sonic Riders game for the Xbox Kinect is nothing less than a dreadful thought that what would be better off not written on the board. Yet somehow someone in the boardroom thought about using another control scheme that would crash the franchise into a fucking mountain. You know how Sonic Team would have all these ridiculous ideas whether it be Sonic in the Arabian Nights, Sonic as a werewolf, or Sonic with a sword, then they followed that up with some weird motion control scheme that I'm willing to believe they didn't probably understand how to execute properly and in turn didn't play test properly. Now maybe you can grasp some concepts where using the motion controls may work, but for games like Secret Rings or Freeriders, hell fucking no. The only facts I could find were about the music in the new cast. As for the game itself, I can tell you this though, attempting to play this is no different than trying to end your own life while pretending to skate. That's how the experience of free riders goes. Because how the hell can anyone have a leisure experience without so much as have any muscle problems? Whether it's trying to turn, jumping, navigating through menus, unless you take your time, or the bane of humanity's existence, two player. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know what this is. Uh, grab, grab, no, you gotta grab the fucking rigid. Go, you're back. I'm trying. You're back. Back. No, the other way. Wanna play as the second player? Prepare to look like a complete moron. Not even the story is intriguing enough to try to play this game. That's so much of a hazardous mess this really is. Hell, maybe you've done some stretching or some base exercises before booting this up, and even then, you're walking right into a new form of hell and you will feel all of it. After this entry, you think that with the debut of the PlayStation 4 or Xbox One, that one day Sonic Riders will make a comeback and offer something greater. No. Instead, you get this. A Sonic racing game. No, there aren't any hoverboards. They took Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing, completely removed all other Sega characters, and topped it off with a shallow Sonic racing game with no story to tell whatsoever and a butchered character roster. At least Crush 40 returned for the main theme song this time around. 
What a wasted opportunity for Sonic Riders to return with all the mechanics and tech from the first game that the fans liked. I honestly can't stress enough how Sonic Riders started out with such a captivating concept, only for it to fall so hard from grace as it continued. And when you think it has a chance to return, no. Instead, a Sonic Racing game that means we turn the other cheek to Crash Team Racing Nitro Field. Sonic Team, as of this recording, hasn't returned to Sonic Riders, and it's becoming painfully obvious that they'll probably treat this the same way Nintendo treats F Zero, bringing it back if they have some dumb gimmick to back it up without even trying to remaster the game that was a fan favorite. So, with Sonic Riders 4 now becoming infeasible as time goes by, what possibilities are there? Well, luckily enough, the fans have done this series justice by creating fan games, such as Sonic Riders DX and Sonic Riders X, later renamed Sonic Riders EVO. Sonic Riders DX is a return of the first Sonic Riders, but with more characters and courses, online multiplayer, and cosmetics. Sonic Riders EVO, I say, is similar to Sonic Riders DX as is reimagined in the first Sonic Riders, bringing back old tracks and revamping them to make them look new. For Zero Gravity, there's Sonic Riders Regravitified which is Zero Gravity with the first Sonic Riders gameplay, offering a near definitive Zero Gravity experience. Recently, someone has changed the gameplay of Freeriders for the better. A patch for Sonic Freeriders was created by one named Ray Sign, who completely removed the Kinect controls and made the game to work with the controller. You can now maneuver the menu with the D-pad or the right stick for cursor control. Enjoy the game as intended without the need of potentially hurting yourself. Multiplayer is made less awkward as well, unless you're into that kind of thing. It's truly amazing how Sonic Team continues to toy with their own beloved franchise, only for the fans to do the actual work and fix their wrongdoing. Sonic Riders may have had an exceptional start, but as the series went on, it showed that there were many problems with how it carried over basic mechanics in the sequels, and the worst part of it all was the missed opportunity for Sonic Riders 4 to make an official breakthrough. I still think that a fourth Sonic Riders game can't happen, but only a Sonic team or a Sega has the means to do so and without any gimmicky shenanigans. The fans were incredibly faithful to the series, but how the series can make an official comeback in this day and age? That remains a mystery. Personally, remastering Riders and Rider Zero Gravity with quality life improvements would be the best step for the series and perhaps a new entry will follow after. But as it is right now, in late 2023, Riders still remains a fan favorite that I think deserves more official attention and brainstorming if it were to return. Shoutouts to all the fans for your dedication and creativity for making Sonic Riders what it is now and hopefully that dedication and creativity will continue. Sonic Riders may have had its downfall but who's to say that it will rise again and take flight? Haha, <laughs> you get it?